Welcome to this video from LMN. Here we're going to kick off the video series with a budget introduction. And for many of you watching, this might be the very first video that you've seen through our LMN video series. In this specific video, we're going to take you through just an introduction to the budget. The budget's the very first thing you need to set up at LMN, and for good reason. An operating budget can not only be a useful tool for helping you set goals like how much you should sell and what your overhead should be, but it's an essential tool for making sure that your estimates are priced properly. There's lots of estimating software out there, and you can type in a quantity and a price, and heck, you can do that in a spreadsheet. The real difference in LMN is that it takes your company's financials and helps you calculate the right price for every job, no matter who's estimating. So whether it's the owner building an estimate at night, or a salesperson building an estimate who really has no access or idea what the true company financials are, LMN will help both parties make sure that they're getting the right price on every job that you bid. So stick with us. It's a critical step. And believe it or not, budgeting can actually be fun once you get the hang of it. Let's start with step one, why you would even need to start with a budget. For many companies, estimating is a bit of a wing and a prayer. We know some prices based on history. We kind of know what our competitors charge. And you wouldn't even be here watching this video today if you had no idea how to price work. The problem for most companies is that every job is a bit of a guess. And at the end of the day, you're going to win some and you're going to lose some. And those ones that you lose can put a serious dent in your profit at the end of the year. We're going to start with a budget to help you make sure that every job has the right amount of overhead recovery and profit specific to your company. So let's start now by taking a quick look at what you're going to need to put together when you're building a budget. There are four main components of the budget. The first component is the sales. That's all money coming into the business. The next section you're going to build are your job costs. Once you've set your sales goals in place, you're going to need to say how many crews are you going to need to hit that sales goal and what equipment you have. You're going to, have to be able to forecast how much material you're going to need to hit those sales goals and also build budgets for subcontractors, equipment rental, and other miscellaneous costs. Step three is overhead costs. These are expenses to the company, but they're expenses that you don't actually estimate specifically into a bid. Finally, you're left with net profit. Start with your sales, subtract all the costs of doing the work, then subtract the company's overhead costs, and what you're left with is your company's net profit. Many companies struggle to understand what overhead is or come up with a real actual number for overhead. A lot of the times, this is because accounting is vague. It never really was explained to the owner or the estimators what overhead exactly was. And if you really look at a lot of companies' numbers, these two costs are mixed together in their accounting. You've got job costs and overhead, and, and vice versa. You've got overhead over in job costs when you look at many companies' p and To build a good budget, it's essential that you figure these two things out and come up with a clear number for each of them. The good news is it's really simple to do so. Job costs are the costs that your estimators think about when you're building a price for a customer. Overhead costs are going to be the costs that you don't actually tabulate when building an estimate, but you hope that are covered. Here's a list of the usual job costs. The first one is hours and wages. When an estimator builds a price for the job, one of the first things they try to figure out is how long is this going to take? How many guys am I going to need on site here and for how long? Then we'll have a cost for their average wages plus payroll taxes, workers comp and other variables. And that'll be step one of the estimate. The next step is equipment. Some companies have most of their equipment in overhead, but it's certainly more accurate to estimate your jobs when you're pricing equipment into the job. So if the job's going to need a skid steer and a pickup truck and a mini X, the job's going to pay for all three. And if the job doesn't need that big equipment because of access or any other reason, then the job shouldn't have to absorb those pieces of equipment cost. So equipment is one of those things that whether you do today or not, certainly is a good idea to build your equipment into your estimates based on the equipment the crew is going to need to get that job complete. Thirdly is the materials list. This should be self-explanatory. Every time you build an estimate for a customer, you're going to try to calculate the cost of the materials you're going to need. 
and make sure that's built into the price you're passing over. Finally, you've got subs and rentals and other costs. These are going to be any other extraneous costs that are going to be required to complete the job. These represent what most people term as job costs or cost of goods sold. These are the costs, typically, that your estimators think about when they're building a price for a customer job. But as an owner, or as anybody interested in the profitability of a company, you've got to make sure that the company operating costs are covered as well. These are overhead costs, and these are the costs that don't get thought about specifically when estimators are building a bid. The first part of these costs is overhead expenses. So you've got things like rent, insurance, advertising, cell phone bills, software bills. These are things that no estimator is actually going to try to calculate on a job by job basis. But in the price that you're charging the customer, you've got to make sure these costs are covered. This is what LMN is primarily built to help you do when estimating. Step two is overhead wages. So you also got the salaries and wages of people that work in the company that don't necessarily work hands-on on the jobs. These might be people like accountants, bookkeepers, the owner, a mechanic, a shop and yard person. Anyone whose time actually goes to payroll but doesn't get counted when you build estimates would be counted as an overhead wage. Finally, you've got net profit. You've got to make sure the company's returning a fair net profit. Because if the company's not even making a fair net profit, why go through any of this work of running a landscape company anyway? You'd probably be better off working for somebody else. If you set up a budget with all these costs in the right places, costs of goods sold in one section, overhead in another, and then use these numbers for estimating, you're going to find your company gets a lot more profitable in a hurry. And you'll probably find some interesting information about the way you've priced jobs in the past. One of the big questions that comes up is, how much time is this going to take me? And even if it's your first time building a budget, the goals that we're going to put on the screen here are pretty realistic. When it comes to preparing your budget, some of you will have it prepared in 10 minutes. All it really takes is a few documents out of QuickBooks and you'll be ready to go. For those of you who maybe don't have great accounting background or great accounting numbers, it may take you a little longer to gather the right information. But on average, most companies can prepare in two hours or less. For most companies, they can finish their budget in a day. And going forward, year over year, you can simply copy your budget and make revisions. So future budgets will take half a day or less. The next step is going to be to start your budget. So get ready for the next video with this information in hand. Print a profit and loss statement out of your accounting. Try to print an entire year's P&L because you're going to build a year's budget when we're building the budget. Now, for some of you, this could be a calendar year. For others, this could be a fiscal year. It doesn't really matter as long as you have one complete calendar year. Because landscaping is seasonal, some months are big for revenue or other months are big for costs. So you want to make sure that no matter whether you're annual year or fiscal year, you want to make sure you just have a complete 12 months. So like a November to October picture is just as good as a January to December as long as it's one complete set of 12 months. The next thing you're going to need is a payroll summary, and once again, for an entire year. This is going to help you understand how many working hours you have by each position, how many overtime hours each type of staff works, and the number of staff you're going to need to hit your sales goal. Finally, and this might take the longest, is an equipment list. You don't need to build a list for all of your little equipment, just your major equipment. Anything over 5,000 would be appropriate for this list. Anything under 5,000. You might want to put a list together if you think you have some bigger things in between the two and $4,000 mark, but we're not looking for a list of every single piece of equipment you have, just the big stuff. Once you've got all this, you're ready to get started. And in the very next video, we're going to walk you through starting your first budget. Before we do so, we wanted to stress one thing. If you have any questions along the way, be sure to reach out to us. That's what we're here for. You can reach out by email at support at golmn.com, or you can use the live chat button in the LMN software itself and ask your questions right there to a live support representative during working hours. Either way, we're here to help you build an accurate budget so that you can make sure that you step forward into estimating with a good deal of confidence.
So good luck. As this information starts to come together, even if it's a little frustrating at first, you're going to start seeing lights turn on in your business. You're going to understand where your numbers are going and where they need to be to get you where you want to be. And once that starts happening in real life, like it has for thousands of other LMN members, it does get fun and exciting to run a business again.